course, Huntington's as a disease is not going to go away, is it? There's no cure. Thus that? far, and it, it, I no. mean, as a layman, I do find it difficult to believe that that there could be any cure. I think that you know. I think that as more and more people decide not to have children, yeah. it will diminish. I think that I, I know that drugs are improving and that mm. um, it's possible to give better care to those who are affected. And in the Huntington's Awareness Program and their Awareness Week this year, they're, going, they're focusing on how to give this care, palliative care, and care at the end of the life of patients and also care to the families and that care is tremendously important because um, the heart of it is love that's what enabled my father and my mother to survive those years and me actually that this the surrounding of love and uh, this was a very long time and it was in a, an old-fashioned mental hospital where my father was for two and a bit years but there was an atmosphere of care and love there which supported my mother and me in that time and that's that's the key to the palliative care and also preparing people for the end everything you've said you know sounds very positive but there must have been awful bleak moments mustn't there both for you yeah and and your mother terrible and absolutely black and um, I think in life you get those periods and moments and maybe very long periods in a whole varieties variety of ways and um, Huntington's is you know, a, a very strong example of that happening. And I mean, it is just is the case that, you know, a lot of people who are affected do commit suicide. And those at risk com commit suicide. The, na the proportion is higher than in the general population. And also there is depression suffered by patients and those at risk and depression which is different from a symptom of the disease. They're able to distinguish this um, somehow. So it can be very, very bleak. I'd, I'd, I'd like to um, quote a second doctor who was very important to me, Dr. Hovenden. Um, and I dedicated to him a third book I wrote, which is a, a book for children. It's an adventure story. And in this book, there are two friends in their teens. And one of them is at risk from Huntington's and the other isn't. And they share life together and their two families share it and they come through. Well, it's, a, it's also a rather creepy adventure story to try to, you know, make young people interested invite them to read it. Um, and Dr. Hovenden, to whom the book is dedicated, to whom I dedicated the book, sadly after his death, um, he said to me, right at the beginning of this time, but not long after I had been told, because I was in London by then, where he practiced, and he said to me, you will always have to allow for it. You will always have to allow for it. And he meant, adjust your life and behavior, everything, to the fact that it's as if you're carrying this weight on your shoulders. And not only me, my wife, and not only the two of us, but other people. And some of them know and some of them don't know that, you know, that they're carrying this because of our behavior. Um, and he was a very... Um, it was very wise what he said. It's been a great help. So uh, it's very important to allow for it and to adjust behavior, expectations, 
tempo of life, everything to take account of this very strange phenomenon. <laughs>